Now, you wouldn't notice it at first, but every second, the air around you is thinning, little by little. After 30 seconds, you're gasping. Engines fail, hospitals go dark. By minute two, planes are crashing, oceans are suffocating, and the sky is turning deadly. If Earth started losing 1% of its oxygen every second, this is exactly how fast the world would end. But how long would it take until we completely run out of oxygen? Can anything survive in a zero oxygen world? And is there hope for humans to someday repopulate Earth? Okay, so the first few seconds after the oxygen starts disappearing, things wouldn't be so bad. After 10 seconds, there's still 90% as much oxygen as there was before. Maybe you'd get a feeling that the air you were breathing was a little thinner, as if you suddenly decided to hike up Mount Everest. And if you actually ended up on a mountain that high, it would feel even worse. At 5,500 meters, there's already only half the amount of air available as there is at sea level, and now there'd be 10% less oxygen available. So if you were hiking up these heights, you'd be huffing and puffing even more. And if you were an elite athlete, well, your body would be extremely sensitive to changes in the environment. You'd feel exhausted from things that would normally come incredibly easy to you. If you're not in those scenarios, well, maybe you wouldn't be panicking, but there are some people who would. Meteorologists, earth scientists, and anyone monitoring the atmosphere they would instantly notice the bizarre readings coming in from their instruments. In the time that it takes them to call each other or report an emergency to the government, another 20 seconds would have passed. And going from 21% to 19% oxygen was nothing, but in the next 20 seconds, things are gonna get a lot worse. 30 seconds have passed since oxygen levels started dropping, and now, 26% of Earth's oxygen is gone. We used to have 21% oxygen in the Earth's atmosphere and 79% nitrogen. Now with a quarter of the oxygen gone, it only makes up 16% of the atmosphere. What does that mean for you? Well, you definitely notice the difference. You're suddenly gasping for air, taking in bigger lungfuls and hyperventilating or breathing much, much faster. You might be standing at sea level on the streets of New York, but your lungs feel like you're on a high altitude climb. The only folks who might feel okay, well, they're the ones visiting from high altitude cities like Aspen, Colorado. This city sits at 2,500 meters above sea level. Living at high altitude for years, well, their bodies would have already acclimatized to lower oxygen. So if they're wandering about at sea level, they'd be able to handle the 16% oxygen level. Anyone doing hard labor feels like they have to slow down. Construction workers find sweat pouring down their faces as they try to breathe harder. Factory workers operating heavy machinery might find they're less coordinated and accidents might go up. In hospitals, things might get ugly. Sick people who are already suffering from breathlessness would feel worse. Someone with heart failure, stroke, or arterial damage would already be suffering from a lack of oxygen. Now, they'd have even less. Their hearts would beat faster in a desperate attempt to get more oxygen to the body. But this won't work because there's just not enough oxygen available in the air. Because less oxygen is reaching their brain, they'll become confused and some of them will die. And it's not just humans who would be suffering. Birds would start falling out of the sky. Birds depend on the 21% oxygen level in the atmosphere. They have extremely high energy needs as it takes a lot of power to beat gravity and stay flying in the air. Now, to meet these high energy needs, birds have evolved to extract 25% more oxygen from the air than us mammals. But with the sudden drop in oxygen, would run out of energy and would find themselves dropping out of the sky. Well, what about plants? Well, maybe you think they'd be okay, as all they do is take in carbon dioxide and make sugars. But plants breathe in oxygen too, just like us, and they use it to burn food to get energy. 
the drop in oxygen would force them to use alternative paths to get their energy. Now, maybe all this stress would make you want to have a relaxing campfire, but no luck there. Less oxygen means fires would be sputtering or no longer able to burn. This could also mean that electrical grids would go dark. Without electricity, trains would come to a halt, traffic signals would stop working, emergency signals would start to blare as automated warning systems get activated. After hearing from scientists, governments around the world will have issued the highest levels of security alerts. Cable news anchors will announce the emergency even as they struggle to breathe. Governments may assume that it's a highly coordinated attack on their country until they see that it's happening everywhere around the world. Presidents and prime ministers will get hooked up to oxygen if it's available, but they'll be panicking as they see everyone around them struggling to survive. Out on the roads, people will start yelling and honking their horns. There'll be massive traffic jams on the highways. But why? Well, the standard combustion engine is designed to run using air that has 21% oxygen. With that percentage dropping to 16%, well, the engine can't provide the power that's needed. People will be getting out of their cars, gasping for air, and walking away. Guess we should have bought electric. Oh, it won't just be car engines that are failing. Engines in airplanes won't function properly either. Engines usually compress the air at high altitudes to extract enough oxygen to make the fuel burn. But at this rapidly depleting level of oxygen, there's not enough to help burn the fuel. The seatbelt light comes on, emergency air masks drop for the hyperventilating passengers. Air traffic controllers will see a flood of calls coming in, requesting permission for emergency landing as engines start to fail. Or even worse, planes will start falling from the sky. And it's more than just cars and planes. Anything that uses a combustion engine is in trouble. Power boats and ships start stalling in open waters. Excavators can't dig the earth, and bulldozers come to a grinding halt. And the problems will only get worse. Okay, you're now a little past one minute, and a horrifying 50% of the oxygen in the atmosphere is gone. If you were gasping for breath at the half minute mark, well, you and everyone else around the world are now feeling a whole lot worse. Everyone is breathing faster now, breaths coming short and shallow. With oxygen concentration in the air down to 11%, humans are fighting to survive. You look at yourself in the mirror and your lips have turned blue. There's so little oxygen reaching your brain that it can't function. Your thinking is warped and your judgment is poor. You want to pick up a phone and dial your loved ones, but you can't make your arms and legs move the way you want them to. You stagger out onto the road. What you see makes you realize the end of the world is here. It's the apocalypse. Emergency sirens are going off with no one to respond. People are staggering or lying unconscious in the street. As you look up into the sky, you see planes falling down toward Earth. The dwindling supply of oxygen has pushed engines to complete failure. One minute wasn't long enough for pilots to pull off emergency landings. You crawl back inside to avoid being hit on the head by falling debris. The scarce few patients hooked up to oxygen in hospitals are still breathing, but they see the oxygen levels depleting on their cylinders and they're overcome with fear. The doctors and nurses who tended to them, they're in no shape to look after them anymore. Now, is there any good news in this scenario? Well, forest fires that were smoldering half a minute ago are now completely out. There's not enough oxygen for even hot coals to glow, let alone a forest fire to burn. Now, at this point, there's another change taking place. With less oxygen in the air, well, atmospheric pressure has dropped. Less pressure on the ocean waters means that they start to release dissolved gases. Dissolved oxygen starts to leave the ocean, so there's less for the fish to breathe. This degassing will affect all the ocean's creatures. When the ocean loses oxygen, they'll be struggling to breathe. Ocean creatures breathe oxygen that's dissolved in water, but now that there's less oxygen, 
they're all gonna die too. Okay, that's what's going on in the oceans, but what's happening up in the sky? Well, the next part of our environment that'll suffer from a drop in oxygen is the stratosphere. Now, the ozone layer is made up of oxygen, where three atoms combine to form a single ozone molecule. But a severe drop in oxygen means that the ozone is depleting. And as the ozone gets destroyed, harmful UV rays from the sun will strike Earth. These rays cause cancer and cataracts in humans. Anyone gasping for air on the beach suddenly feels the sun's rays burning into them, even stronger than before. The only good news is that at the rate that the oxygen is disappearing, well, they won't be around to see any of the harmful effects that have happened to their bodies. Okay, another whole minute has passed, and the oxygen level has plummeted even further. Now, 70% of the oxygen in the atmosphere is gone. The concentration in the air has gone from 21% two minutes ago to a mere 6%. As the level drops to 6%, humans and animals will begin fainting and falling to the ground unconscious, their faces turned ash-colored. If this 6% oxygen concentration were to last only four or five minutes, well, that would be some hope for anyone who's still alive to recover. If it lasted six minutes, 50% of us would survive. But it's not going to last another second, because every second there's less and less oxygen. Humans, animals, plants, everything is dying, everywhere. It's the biggest mass extinction event the Earth has ever seen. Just like 550 million years ago, when a sudden drop in oxygen wiped out 80% of life. Oxygen has disappeared from the deep waters of the ocean, killing off animals that live on the sea floor. The plankton that produce fresh oxygen to replenish our supplies are rapidly dying themselves. The massive infrastructure that humans have built on Earth is crumbling. There's no more electricity being generated from fossil fuels because burning coal or gas needs oxygen, which is gone. When everything else is dying, weirdly enough, solar and hydroelectricity continue to generate. Water is still flowing and solar cells don't need oxygen. Earth has clean energy at last, but just with no one to use it. But it gets even worse. This catastrophic event isn't just an exercise in holding your breath. No, this is a complete wipeout of everything on Earth. It's not just oxygen in the atmosphere that's going away. Every molecule of oxygen on Earth is disappearing. That means the oxygen atoms that bind with hydrogen to make water, oxygen that's part of the Earth's crust, and oxygen that's in concrete holding our buildings together. The oceans are becoming a sea of hydrogen as all the oxygen escapes. Earth's crust crumbles into silicon and carbon, and oxygen from concrete disappears, but can no longer bind together, causing all the buildings on Earth to crumble to dust. Okay, eight minutes after the start of this catastrophe, 99% of the oxygen in the atmosphere will be gone. From 21% of the atmosphere, oxygen now will make up less than 1% of the air. And less than 1% of our bodies, the crust and the environment. All living things will be dead. It's not just that they can't breathe anymore, their bodies will literally fall apart as oxygen disappears. The human body is 65% oxygen, and along with the buildings, human bodies will become a pulpy mess as oxygen disappears everywhere. There's no coming back from these scenarios. Plants, humans, Earth, everything will be destroyed. Is there any way Earth could recover from this massive eight-minute deoxygenation? No, not if we removed oxygen from every single compound on Earth. Not for billions of years, at least. But let's rewind a little to a slightly less horrific scenario. What if oxygen only disappears from the atmosphere? Could the Earth recover in that scenario? Well, if that's the case, 
For starters, our buildings would still be standing. Phew. Hello, Colosseum. And some living creatures would have survived, because there are some bacteria that survive without oxygen altogether. The anaerobic bacteria. These were the first ones to emerge on Earth billions of years ago. And with this rapid oxygen depletion, it's almost like we've gone back in time. Conditions are perfect for them to multiply. But what about the rest of life? How about if we flipped a magic switch at this point, so there was a big reversal and Earth gained 1% oxygen every second? Well, in a little under eight minutes, the Earth would be right back to where we started, 21% oxygen. Unfortunately, there would still be a whole lot of dead people, animals, and dead plant matter everywhere. But wait a minute, let's take a closer look. Not all the animals may be totally dead. There are two that have been seen to go without oxygen for quite a while and still live. First are cockroaches. They've been known to live after being submerged in water for up to 40 minutes, so there's a good chance they're coming back to life when we flood the earth with oxygen again. Then there's the naked mole rat. It can survive up to 18 minutes without oxygen. Now, in addition to these, there's another type of creature that may have survived. It has a useful trait. It can switch back and forth between oxygen-rich and oxygen-deficient environments. I'll tell you the exact scientific term, they're called facultative anaerobes. If oxygen is available, they breathe like us humans do. But if there's no oxygen, they switch to fermentation. Either way, they survive. So it's possible that Earth would also still have these kicking around some bacteria, some yeasts, some fungi, and even some invertebrates in the ocean. One of the aquatic invertebrates with this double survival advantage is a type of segmented worm called a bristle worm. Now, if we waited for life to evolve from anaerobic bacteria, we might have to wait for billions of years. After all, it took two and a half billion years for humans to evolve from cyanobacteria that first time round. And there's no guarantee that that evolution cycle will take place the second time around. At least not on Earth, which is becoming rapidly more inhospitable. More about that in a minute. A more promising path to Humans 2.0 is from the multicellular creatures. Maybe the bristle worms or the naked mole rats after millions of years of evolutionary cycles would lead to a second coming of humans. Assuming, of course, that cockroaches don't take over the Earth. But there's a time constraint. Earth is not going to remain the pleasant place it is right now for billions more years. In a mere 600 million years from now, Earth is going to be a whole lot hotter. The sun will be 6% more luminous, and the amount of solar radiation hitting Earth will go up a lot. If new life forms evolve from what's left, well, they'll have to adapt to survive on a planet that keeps getting hotter. With this heat in 600 million years, there'll be no more photosynthesizing plant life. The intense heat of the sun will drive the removal of carbon dioxide from the atmosphere, making photosynthesis impossible. Then, in another 400 million years, that hot sun will make our oceans evaporate. With no water, it's going to be very hard for even roaches to survive. Well, I'm pretty happy we're not losing 1% oxygen every second. Even if we gain it back, human life on our beautiful blue marble would pretty much be destroyed. And if it's not oxygen yo-yoing back and forth, well, the sun can have a pretty horrific effect on Earth as it ages and heats up more. But what if we poured all the Earth's water on the sun? Would that cool it down? It just might, but that's a story for another What If.